Seven General Teaching Principles. This course was designed for EFL teachers, and we assume that the participants of this course have some previous knowledge and experience in L2 teaching and learning. Much of what we know from our EFL experiences will serve us in teaching content, but it is worth our time to look at basic learning principles that apply across subjects. The following is a summary of the book, How Learning Works, Seven Research-Based Principles for Smart Teaching. These seven principles have substantial research backing and apply across disciplines, math, history, L2 acquisition, etc. Learning principle number one, students' prior knowledge can help or hinder learning. When students can connect new information with knowledge and beliefs that they had previously, they will remember more and learn more quickly. An example of this is if you are told information about someone. If that information is about Laura, and you know Laura, the information will be easy to remember. If the information is about someone you have never met and have never heard of, you will probably forget the new information. The same principle works whether we are talking about people or things. Therefore, we as teachers should always connect new concepts with something the students already know. A common example of this in EFL teaching is to discuss a topic with the class before they watch a video about that topic. To use the terminology that we saw in Module 1, making these connections happens by activating some of the schemata that students have. The other side to principle number one is that sometimes new learning conflicts with knowledge and beliefs that the learner already has. The learner's previous understanding either needs to be corrected or widened. This may have happened to you when you first read about the differences between learning and acquisition. Learning to use words in a new, more technical way can be difficult at first because of the conflict it represents with previous knowledge. Learning principle number two. How students organize knowledge influences how they learn and apply what they know. Knowledge organization has to do with how a person relates ideas to each other. For example, we relate verb tenses to timelines and to each other, and we divide up the animal kingdom into well-defined categories. The more interrelationships among concepts, and the stronger and clearer those relationships, then the better a learner's understanding and ability to apply the concepts to new problems and new situations. Thus, in addition to relating new knowledge to previous knowledge, principle number one, teachers should explicitly address how concepts relate to other concepts and the situations in which these concepts can be applied. Learning principle number three. Students' motivation determines, directs, and sustains what they do to learn. Without motivation, learning does not move forward. The stronger the motivation, the more learning we can expect. There are many kinds and sources of motivation. A teacher needs to know his or her students in order to tap effectively into their motivations. This includes relating examples in class to topics, art forms, people, and events that are of interest to the students. A teacher can also remind students 
how what they are learning now will allow them to do what they want to do in the future. Learning principle number four. To develop mastery, students must acquire component skills, practice integrating them, and know when to apply what they have learned. This means that if a task requires the use of multiple skills, it is better to have the opportunity to practice each skill in isolation first. The combination of all skills will go better once each subskill is given its due practice. For example, in a math class, if the students have to both solve for x and graph the equation 3x equals 6y squared minus 21, it is better to explain and practice each step in isolation at some moment. In a later moment, the relationship between solving for x and graphing the results should be reinforced. The principle of learning component skills has to do with the concept of cognitive load. When a concept is new, it needs to be the focus of one's exploration. Trying to understand too many new concepts together all at once can lead to cognitive overload, which results in confusion and does not result in learning. Learning principle number five. Goal-directed practice coupled with targeted feedback enhances the quality of students' learning. This principle advises us teachers in two specific areas. One, we need to communicate to students what their objectives and goals should be. And two, we should provide learners with targeted feedback. This means not simply to give students the correct answer when they make a mistake, but to guide them on the steps to arriving at the correct answer themselves with that guidance. In this way, students not only learn more, but they also develop skills for future learning, which leads logically to the next learning principle. Learning principle number six. To become self-directed learners, students must learn to assess the demands of the task, evaluate their own knowledge and skills, plan their approach, monitor their progress, and adjust their strategies as needed. Learners must be able to monitor not just the correctness of their answers, but also their own learning processes. The best way to develop this awareness in students is by asking them to reflect back on their learning and evaluate their own performance. Learning principle number seven. Students' current level of development interacts with the social, emotional, and intellectual climate of the course. We must ensure that our lessons are appropriate for the developmental phase of our students, as well as their social and emotional needs. As discussed in Module 2, learners need to feel comfortable enough in class to experiment and express themselves. When they do not feel that way, the effective filter will stop them from learning as much as they were prepared to learn. We will return to the issue of creating a positive classroom environment in Module 5. This is the reference used for this text.